Okay, since my bore mill, which is homemade, is working that good as it is, I decided to show you the video of it. As you can see, it's very simple, and yeah, the whole symbol, uh, the sign is very simple. What we have here is a, a medium uh, speed going uh, 12 volts motor, which is um, driving this uh, this shaft right here, a um, PVC tube which is uh, two centimeter in diameter, and it's driven by a rubber, uh, some kind of band right here, which is pretty tight. This is a ball bearing, and there's another one in yellow, and and this is a perforated band or what it's called that is holding the the ball bearings in place. This is just uh, two rollers, like uh, the ones to put in uh, beneath your uh, under your closet, uh, what you want them to use for, and. Um, yeah, as you can see, my wires is packed up in in some kind of plastic bag to prevent them from moisture. Since I'm normally using this one outside, and I have covered a hole on the motor, a vent hole. I can uncover it here, so you can see it's just a hole. There it is. Yeah. And uh, that's just to prevent moisture from getting into the motor. And yeah, it's pretty much what it is, and it's driven by a a um, old a car battery charger because um, I didn't have any uh, other high output or what you may call it a charger for this engine to run or motor. It's called. I'm just gonna let go of my camera so I can show you my um, my also homemade um, jar for the meal. So I'm just gonna place it in my stand here. Okay, I'm just gonna get it. Now this is my jar, which I'm using. It's um, 11 centimeters in diameter inside, I think. And the, these are the plugs that I'm using. The one in the other end is actually uh, wider, this way. Um, and I've cut this one shorter to make it easier to get out. And I have written open in this end, but yeah. Um, it's gone with the time, so there's only one little red mark left. But I can uh, see the difference. And this is a very simple jar, and I'm placing it here between these two rollers and the shaft right here. And it's uh, driving around and working very good. So, um, for grinding my uh, uh, not non oxidizers materials or not mixed. Materials. I'm using just regular glass marbles. I can just fill the barrel in a second. You can see the marbles. These have been grinding some charcoal, so that's why they are black. And it's mixed marbles. Some of them are round. Some of them are are this um half hemi shape I don't know if you can see it but I hope so which is flat on one end and round on the other end some kind of parabolic shape and I'm just gonna put the lid on oh I forgot to put in the this insulator here which actually is on when you buy this uh, this um, piece of connector pipe I think it is to connect two other bits of pipes Oh. Wrong way. I'm sorry for you to wait on this, but I hope you <laughs> don't care too much about it. The reason that I um, pulled the band out is that I had to take out the rest of the chemicals which have which have um, eventually stuck in the in the barrel. So now I'm going to turn it on and check the camera up again. Oh, this band fall off. Just a second. And that was a piece of charcoal that I stepped on. 
not glass or anything. It don't used to fall off, but I don't know what happened. No, I'm just gonna turn on again. And as you can see, it's running in a very good speed, and it's very loud because of the the marble all banging into the walls of this, uh, this cell. And I hope you can hear my voice. And I'm actually shouting right now. And you can see. It's showing there, and I'm used to do it outside when I'm grinding both oxidizers and two. I'm gonna turn this off again. And the reason why I used to uh, to operate this one outside is that I actually, which is a no go usually, uh, used to to grind both fuels and oxidizers in the same barrel but never metals which is actually a smart move I think but I I used to place the the barrel outside far away from any buildings and stuff like that so I can uh, use it and operate it and another reason why I'm taking the chance is that I know that these two plugs will just blow out of the the tube and it's HTP, I think, and um, HTMM, which is the same as HTTP. As you can see, it's right there. So, and therefore, nothing should happen if it detonated and blew out the plugs, which I hope not to happen. Oh, look what I found on the floor. <laughs> Fuse cover from a co conventional firework. Yeah, but that was just a quick preview of my board mill, and you can see the place where I'm recording is the same place where I test my black powders and stuff like that. And these batches of black powder that I uh, have tested in my other videos, and also my star, has only been grinding for around 6 hours in this board mill, and it was as coarse as this, the black powder, the charcoal, this coarse, and it's very very fine. And it's, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I've, you can say very airflowed, but there's nothing caused but particles in the mix. And everything is just very fine after six hours in this ball mill. And I just can't see why it's so efficient, but um, yeah, it works pretty good. And that's why I'm not gonna buy any expensive ball mill, but I'm probably gonna buy some aluminum balls to use as grinding media or lead. But I can't seem to find any cheap ones right now. Because I live in in Denmark, it's very expensive for shipping to to uh, from the outside of Denmark to the inside, and I can't find anyone in Denmark who sells it. So I'm just gonna wait for the right moment, and <laughs> hopefully I'll get back when I have found some of the good ball mill materials. Yeah, but as you can see, this is a very good ball mill. Uh, but that's what I think. Thank you for watching and please comment, rate and subscribe of what you think of this ball mill I have made myself.